The following is a presentation of Morning Drive Media. Broadcasting live from beautiful, sexy, steamy Studio City, California. If you've never been, you gotta come to believe me. All right, this is the Knapsack Files, and for some reason, I'm sounding like Wolfman Jack today, but it's okay. I'm Ken Knapsack, your host for the Knapsack Files, and we are back here with uh, episode 39 proper, along with a couple bonus episodes in the can. But this is, uh, well, it's gonna be a fun uh, fly by the seat of my pants because I just wanted to spend some time with this gentleman today. Uh, and that is the editor-in-chief of the com movie news website and former guest of the Knapsack Files, Mr. Mark Riley. Hello, Mr. Knapsack. Yeah. That just cracked me yeah. up the whole time. Uh, it's a little bit unhinged. We had a good dinner. Yes, we did. Thank we, you, by the way, for oh, that wow. wonderful dinner. My pleasure, man. Uh, good to spend time with you outside of, uh, well, not outside of Schmoes, but outside of the grind. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, we, we don't do it enough. We always want to see each other more, hang out mm-hmm. outside of the business or, or what, what we do. The business. You call that a business? It is a business. It is a business. And I want to talk to you about that business because the last time you were on, we... Um, Mm-hmm. It's funny. I was going to listen to what we talked about. I hate to repeat topics when I've returned guests, but that's okay. It, you know, it was so long ago. Listen to it. it was like episode eleven or twelve, the beginning the, of the Napsack Files, the humble beginnings. Oh, you mean just my solo one? Not your solo not with one. Uh, Roger Craig Smith one. Right. Well, and that's right. This is your third appearance on yeah. the show. You're making a run for Megan Finley's title. Oh, of, of, good. Uh, most uh, appearances on the Napsack Files. I think oh. she's up about four or five now. Okay, I can um, I can catch her. You can catch her. Yeah, that's good. I'll, I'll, it, I'll throw down that gauntlet. Must be the uh, USC connection yeah uh, yeah that I, might I, be I, might, I like getting trojans in here but yeah that's right you were on with our good buddy roger craig smith one of the mm-hmm. nicest gentlemen in this fine town that we know mm-hmm. that you introduced us to but uh, early on since then uh yeah. we've really uh the schmoes no website has taken off yeah it has um it's growing in both um views and unique visits and yeah. reputation yeah yeah I'm pretty and, stoked about that. And sometimes in this business, I, I want to talk about that first. Once you go from a movie blog, yeah, which the Schmoes website, for lack of a better better term, was for for a few years. It yeah. was a, a side piece to their YouTube channel, and yeah. I was running it for a while. We yep. had opinion pieces. Your Riley Roundtable appeared, and yeah. occasionally maybe we talk about the news. Yeah, but. The news is where the money is, so to speak. Yeah. That's reality time. So when you started, uh, when I accidentally pawned the website onto you, <laughs> which I still yeah. re- still remember that conversation on Ventura Boulevard. Uh, yeah, I do, I, I do too. <laughs> hey, man, I just need some help. I'm kind of busy right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do whatever you need. Mm-hmm. And um, I haven't touched the website since. Yeah. It just kind of fell in my lap because I was really not doing anything. You know, right. I just is kind of, uh, it right. was like... Are we, I'm going to go right into it, I guess. Do it, do uh, it. Right, you know, right after my divorce. So right. it was just kind of like, uh, you know, and you know, needing something to do <laughs> to actually get out of bed. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> See, it provided you hope. That's okay. Yeah, That's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, no. It was, I mean, you know, but I mean, but that was, that, uh, but that was still almost a year after I was... So you, right, I wasn't. I didn't recall. I don't recall being fresh off your divorce, but I no, a, it was a about year, a year of, off, uh, off of my divorce. But the you, wound, the wounds were still there. The wounds were there, but you know, you missed Dark Riley. <laughs> I know? did miss Dark Riley. Yeah, the, the, the I, I knew you, but we didn't become friends until around that time. Uh, right? Uh, no, I, I had the merged. Yeah, I had the year of like you know, you know, holding on to my job of personal training and and. And you know, barely getting out of bed, and and just watching movies and playing video games. Henceforth, you'll yeah. be known as Doc Riley. That's right. That's right. funny. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, get back to the website. We read. We realized about that point that news is kind of where the hits are. Yeah. And don't misunderstand me, folks. That I'm not saying things are done on that site or any website. Well, some websites maybe to to go garner hits. Right. Right. It's just about putting the news out there. Yeah, and that's where the site has taken off. Yeah, I think that it that was a goal that we even talked about. Yeah, you know, me and you, we met with Luis Mendoza of the Mendoza yeah. Agency to, to to build the website, uh, which he did. So thank you, Luis. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, that you know, if you just have content uh, and and news um, and you know breaking news, and and we're lucky now we actually have context so we can break our own stuff. Mm-hmm. But we you know essentially it started as hey come to schmoesno.com and get your movie news um, yeah. and and we'll 
we'll do it in a way that's not like you know today a uh, variety reports are blah 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 no it's like we have an opinion about it yeah and, that's what i like what you've done uh, what you have done along with some of the other writers there uh, yeah. who's on your writing staff now uh, we got Cobster. Mm-hmm. We got uh, Alex Welsh. Mm-hmm. We got uh, Stacy Howard. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got uh, David De La Riva. He does the games. He mm-hmm. he kind of really. I got to give him a good shout out because he. <laughs> there was like no news happening last week because of E3, the right. gaming thing, and that guy just tur- just turned it out. And I was yeah. like, oh yeah, there's a video game conference. Oh yeah, video games. I, c- you know, because I'm the movie guy, yeah. uh, and, and if, so we have the gaming guy. So he really yeah. helped us there. And then uh, Joe Ruggiello. Is, is still going strong. A still, formerly still. shoesy pants on the podcast. That's right. Uh, graduated to more adult pastures by yes. becoming Joe Ruggiero once again in yes. writing. Yes. Um, so I want to ask you this tough question. Okay. Um, I hope it's tough. I hope I'm a hard-hitting journalist here. But when we <laughs> finally made that first cross, and I kind of remember specifically there's one story. It was the Star Wars kind of casting scoop that had yeah. come out onto our desk through yeah. a source. And it seemed pretty legit and, yeah. and all this kind of stuff. When we made that decision. I, I was one of the people that said, I know to you, and maybe I didn't put it out there to be fair to Christian or Ellis. Yeah. Um, Christian Harloff and Mark Ellis is our grand poobahs of the Schmoes No World, the exactly. guys who created this brand and world that we play in. Yeah. Um, I know I said to you, once you cross this line, mm-hmm. you can't go back. Yeah. Once you go there and say, we've got a scoop, you're in this world, it's hard. If it's wrong or if it uh, hurts us, yeah. you can't. it's hard to cross back. Yeah. Was I off base? Did no. You, how did you – did you – you know, I thought it came from a very reliable mm-hmm. source. It turned out to be untrue. Uh, I Possibly. I pretty, mean, pretty, no, yeah, no. It Was it true or not? Well, I, it, it's been sort of... It's one of those things. It's about the Star Wars Episode Seven plot, and there's elements that still might be very true. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I believe. I think it was, though, uh, a scoop that did involve twins, so that we were saying it was the... They were going off of the expanded unit. If we were going the off the ex- twins, yeah, yeah, the solo twins. That was what we thought. Yeah. Um, it, and then, and, and then that it, that's not true. Well, now that we know that there was some of the Star Wars uh, cast members that have been released, but we did do another Star Wars scoop that mm-hmm. turned out to be true, because right. um, it was picked up by a bunch of stuff. But yes, to go back to that, yeah, um, yeah, we that was that was really I was nervous, um, right? Because we did get a lot of. Uh, I believe I, I won't name names now because I think that we've established ourselves now as something that's mm-hmm. that's true and accurate. We've had scoops that have um, been true and been covered by Variety and and all the the major news outlets, and so we're legit. And I'm happy about that. I think at the beginning though, for that scoop, everybody went, "Who the hell are these guys?" Yeah. And I remember uh, some some people that I respected that I would go to their website started calling out Schmoes as hit whores. Right. I remember that uh, reading something about that. That that sucked. You know, I didn't like hearing that. And but yeah, we crossed into that world, and yeah. we haven't gone back. And I do get nervous when we post a scoop uh, mm-hmm. because you know it is legit. This our sources are really really well up there and and, and yeah it's one thing i'll say folks if there's any detractors listening at, at all yeah i i know for a fact these sources yeah sometimes you, are uh, in the room yeah and it's like yeah. yeah no i think we're pretty solid on this one. yeah yeah, yeah. you know it's, it's yeah you know and people have contacted me now because of schmoes yeah being what they are uh i had a a, a marvel uh scooper uh-huh. contact me and said i have this and uh <laughs> Little a little story that we I vetted him by he gave me the entire plot of Captain America Winter Soldier. Oh wow! Um, and uh, you know I said, oh man, if 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 this is true, then I'd just been spoiled the entire movie, and it was true. And so oh, he wow. was he he was absolutely right on the money. And so then hmm. uh, we posted an exclusive with through him. So when you get one of these scoops that comes across your editor in chief desk, yes. Take me through a little bit as best you can about the maybe the vetting process or the decision you have to make. Well, usually it's me and Christian. Like Christian and I will go through. Um, we have a, a well-known scooper, the Phantom, mm-hmm. who has been vetted. Who's he? He was the one that gave us Beetlejuice two with uh, Tim Burton and and uh, Michael Keaton returning. So that was pretty easy there to to vet that because Variety picked it up. And so now anything he or she. 
talks Ooh, about. I see what you did there. Yeah, do you see what I did there? Yeah. Uh, could be a guy. Could be a bra. We, we don't know. We don't know. They're the Phantom. Yeah. So uh, we we do get that. You know, the Phantom drops in and and mm-hmm. sends me and Christian information, and we we go through it, and you know, we decide that you know, then we check with other people i check i i then go through mm-hmm. basically uh, i google and 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 i research and i go has this been has, has this been brought up is you know the internet is really big <laughs> it's, it's expansive it's expansive and there's, there's a, a lot, lot of things there there's a lot of things there's a lot of those those there's a lot of people out there that uh that, well i've seen i've seen stuff come Sorry. in <laughs> I know. I'm so excited! I bumped my. I know that was <laughs> what happened. Earthquake, <laughs> Studio yeah. City. Um, yeah, no, I've seen I've seen stuff come in, and and um, yeah. and, and so the the vetting process, the, the Phantom, he's been vetted. Mm-hmm. So she's been vetted. He's been vetted. We don't know who the Phantom is. You keep is. saying that. Uh, I'm, I'm confused myself. I thought I knew who it was. Maybe now I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you know mm-hmm. or not. Um, but the, like I said, the Marvel scooper, um, I don't even know his name actually or, or, or probably she. probably better you don't. Yeah, that's just an email. Um, I do get, I have gotten people that, that send me stuff and they, you know, absolutely know like they're out just, of left field they're like hey, did you hear that you know superman's going to be dead and he's going to turn into bizarro that's an exclusive for you guys i'm like who are you they're making a fozzy the bear spin-off standalone movie <laughs> yeah and i'm like who are you and by the way do you know what a period is do you know what, what grammar <laughs> means no i actually got uh, we when riley and i were at dinner here you actually got a, a an inquiry to write yeah uh, and just based on that uh email um no writing's not your thing actually yeah. I, um, I do get that quite a Bit. Me um, write movies now? Good, yes. yes. Me write, me wish long time website writer <laughs> for research proposition. And I mean, it, that's the thing. I, I will say, I guess since we're on the topic, if you want to yeah. write for anything, I think you know this, Mr. Knapsack, as a writer yeah. yourself. Um, you know, the worst thing you could possibly do is send an, uh, a query to a mm-hmm. producer, uh, a, a director, an actor, a writer of a blog, or a, editor in chief, and write an email that has no structure or <laughs> or misspelled words um, yeah. my like, big will you will you accept less than stellar grammar just as long as you have some punctu- punctuation going or <laughs> no okay okay i i mean you know for the purposes of schmoes no i think that you can bend grammar and you know and do slang and say, you know, man, I can't believe this news dropped and this is crazy. Uh, well, I'm glad you because I, I, as a screenwriter, is the basis of most of my writing over yeah. my 20 years uh, in, in, in the business uh, up and down, Me too. so to speak. Um, when you're a screenwriter, the key to dialogue is to write how people talk. Yeah. And yeah. I've received scripts when I was doing some script reading. One of them was submitted by a former English teacher, and you could tell because it was like, "For whom does the bell toll?" Yeah. Um, but I, I did some early uh, in the early heady days of the internet. Uh, I did some uh, music journalism, mm. so to speak. And yeah. It was a very confessional style, so I wrote how I talked, and I yeah, I would get hammered a little bit. Yeah. Um, that's not how that sentence structure goes. Well, yeah. Well, I'm talking to you. Right. My apologies. That. But yeah. To what you're saying is, especially nowadays, when the internet is still kind of uncharted territory, despite what the FCC wants to do to uh, make it not so neutral anymore. Yeah, I know. Um, It'd be awful if that happens. Yeah, it really would. Um, and if you want to make that step from a guy who has a Tumblr in his basement <laughs> writing about movies, you have to be professional. Yeah, I, I think so. And I, that's how, you know, my best example is Alex Welsh. He, right. he sent me... Not only a well-worded email, but he had already sent in a, a sternly worded. A, no, no, just well worded. Well, well worded, well yeah. written. Well written. But a, a, a sample as well. That, that right. it just is easy for me to mm. to get that and read the sample and go, this guy can write because he great. could. Yeah, he, it was a very very good sample. You've been great at finding talent, and and I don't want to go too much more into it now because on our second episode here, I've got you for the evening. We're going to uh, dive more into the website, yes, and actually get to know one of your newest writers, Stacy Howard. Who's That's right. Come out of left field, so to speak, and just yeah. taken over uh, a certain corner of the website that she she has. Um, and I'm excited to bring her in and introduce her introduce her to Schmoville uh, yeah. at large and Me all too. those people because anyway, Napsock Files. Uh, uh, I appreciate all the Schmoville. 
civilians because that's that's who has bled over and helped me get some hits here. Um, All right. Other than that, it's my parents or something, <laughs> you know. Um, but so you're having a you're having a good time. You made that jump in the news, and you yeah. you have a good time as best you can. It's yeah. work. There is it's hard work. You, you work your ass off, and you break your back every day on it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not um, only the other thing people don't realize. Thank you. Yeah, it's not only, and it's not just the writing. It's now become the whole business mm-hmm. of it. Which is the advertiser? Uh, advertisers now, yeah. uh, the the server when it crashes and it's crashed. The worst it, thing in the world. It it becomes it's so weird how it just affects me so much yeah. when it, when it when the server goes down and you can't go to our website. It, that's right. just that drives me nuts. Yeah. Um, or when it's moving slow, or when I have tons of spam coming in, or what, you know, it's just it's like constantly every day I'm yeah. on that website. It's, so. it's big, but you still get to enjoy the movie world, which is big to you. I, yeah. I hope you're still enjoying it. I, I am say. absolutely enjoying it. You, you, you love going to the movies and that theater experience. Yep. Um, I, I Sometimes I wish I enjoyed it a little bit more myself. It's, it's been well documented, <laughs> but I actually do. Maybe you and I you and I went to more movies together. Maybe I'd enjoy it. Yeah. No, me, I'm fun to go to movies l- with. Let me ask you this important question about going to movies. Yes. Uh, when it comes to concessions, uh-huh. uh, finish it before the movie or snack all the way through? Snack all the way through. Uh, we're not going to be friends. Okay. Everything's got to be finished by the trailers. <laughs> You're kidding. Really? No, me and my father have that trait. Wow. No matter what I get, and I don't generally get popcorn in a movie theater, but a hot dog and a bag of Reese's Pieces. Yeah. A bag of Reese's Pieces, Good. people. Yeah. Gone before the first trailer. See, you. yeah, we are, we, we, I might have to leave because <laughs> right now I have to wait for yeah. the very beginning of the movie before I touch anything. Even see you gotta you don't be one of those jerks that uh, the movie starts and nope no 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 I have everything ready to go okay I I respect that yeah I I have That's it all I, totally okay. totally okay. I totally get what you're saying I we're, was at how to, okay I was at How to Train Your Dragon too on opening night Friday and the the woman behind me you know it's a very quiet moment in the film and you know yeah do you want some of this? hey hey John John do you want some. Do you want some? Wait, are they training the dragon? <laughs> Who's the dragon? <laughs> Is that what? No, that's the Viking. Oh, what, so, yeah. What do you love? What makes you really love a movie? Oh, uh, God. Well, in general, I know that's a hard question. That is a hard question. It's a wide open question. But in generally, what kind of movies are you drawn to? Maybe let me start with that. Yeah, well, I like the event movies, the okay. temples, the, yeah. as long as they're done well, you know, because yeah. there's plenty of ones that, that are crap. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, I'll, I'll bring up Godzilla because that's pretty okay. new and pretty fresh. Um, because I, by the went, way, this was recorded in 1999. So we're talking yeah, about the Matthew. Parker. Yes, the the Roland Emmerich. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Jurassic Park. I think it was at the very end yeah, of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but the the recent Godzilla, I went uh, with uh, with my girlfriend, mm-hmm. and um, we. It was my birthday weekend, so it was like opening night. And uh, the the movie starts and people are clapping. And for me, I know that the, we had a pretty heated debate about Godzilla and whether it was good or not. Sure. Um, I loved it. Ellis loved it. Cobster loved it. I think Tiffany, Christian, and uh, some others were, were Alicia kinda, Malone too. Kind of seemed Malone. a little against it. Yeah. yeah, but I just thought it was a great, fun summer movie. Gotcha. And so I thought it was well done. And it's the communal experience which is what I've always loved about opening night movies I, I totally understand that yeah you know like yeah. when Godzilla you know sure. does his, his atomic breath for the first time in the movie and everybody starts clapping yeah that's to me amazing if you know? you're if you're in a room or a, or a theater with fans of the not just the movie but say the genre or, sure. or the epic um, you know whether we're seeing Phantom Menace man uh, say what we, there we go. Say will about the movie Do, I still love the experience of seeing that the first time me too and that was before all the assigned seating that's now happened in la sure sure um but you know so we waited in line and we had the trivial pursuit star wars game because we you yeah. know we had to get there so early to get good seats and then when the again it's exactly true when yeah. the credits not even that when the 20th century fox runs, run, oh, run, yeah. everybody clapped long time ago in a galaxy everybody <sighs> clapped the, the crawl when, everybody when, went in ape shit when Long time ago, a galaxy far, far away fades away, and Star Wars comes yes, up. Yes, that was. I didn't see the first parts of the opening crawl. All I saw was hands and fists and hands yeah. raised in front of me, me and too. I loved that. Me too. It was such a great moment. 
uh, regardless of what happened. That, yeah, that, 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 that moment. Regardless of what happened But after. even uh, seeing Return of the King yeah. with a, a theater full of Lord of the Rings nuts. Yeah. Um, I, so I totally am on board with that. that that's my – because if you go opening night – Mm-hmm. to um, one of these big movies um i have a lot of memories of all these opening night movies sure. that i've gone to like superman returns that was a pretty good experience because you know they were kind of doing a loose sequel to the donner movies mm-hmm. so you had the theme and everything and the, the the opening credits were very reminiscent of the donner movies so we were going crazy and i'm a superman nut mm-hmm. and so it, you know that was really fun but like yeah you the opening night you get the the real fans you know, yeah. they're the ones who are going to, like, they can't miss it. Yeah. You know, even the midnight shows, I would say now. Absolutely. And look, for episode seven, I'm midnight in it somewhere. Oh, you, oh me too. There's no way I'm not. As I, much as most of the time I see movies uh, Monday at 1030 by myself in the morning. Yeah. Um, but there's no, I wouldn't want to miss out on that. Yeah. It's those movies. Yeah. I go, to, I, I have no problem going to movies by myself when I'm catching up, like what you mm-hmm, say, mm-hmm. Uh, like 1030. Yeah. My di- my days are like Sunday. Like I'll go oh, okay. and, uh, you know, I'll catch up on some, some movies. Like I think I'm going to try to maybe do that with 22 Jump Street because mm. um, I miss that. But. You, I, I say I personally, I like the assigned seating because it takes away one of my biggest anxieties in the world, which is finding a good seat. I, I'm away from now. people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you now. I like being able to to buy it and 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 like like how to train your dragon yeah. too. I went with uh, my girlfriend and a couple friends, a couple dragon nuts that as I call them, we all loved it so much, and uh, we were able to buy the tickets and then we were able to go have a drink beforehand mm-hmm. and then just saunter in and get our seat and it was really yeah. easy because when they didn't have that and you're talking about these opening night movies, you would have to go and wait in line and I would always get you talk about anxiety I remember mm-hmm. being like oh my god we gotta get to the theater and oh we gotta get in line and oh my god it's already around the corner I'm horrible with that yeah. and my good friend Megan Finley uh, who I've mentioned now 22 times on this podcast yeah, I believe uh, yeah. uh, we share the same anxiety so if yeah. we're gonna go see a movie together the mm-hmm. uh, movie starts at 8 well we better leave the house at 6.30 yeah <laughs> well the theater's five minutes away yeah, I know. You're yeah. right. 620. <laughs> um, and, well, we have assigned seats. Yeah, you're right. 615. Um, <laughs> then we get there. We settle in. And our husband comes sauntering in. Uh-huh. Um, the movie starts at 8, 759 and 30 seconds. Nice. Uh, motorcycle helmet and, and leather jacket. Coolness, calmness. Gets a seat right next to us that we're still sitting there shaking like uh, we uh, yeah, the movie. Uh, you know, I, I don't, it's not a healthy thing. No, <laughs> it's and, not and, a thing. And and so funny. I just know exactly what you're talking about. And, uh, there was one of the movies us uh, I did see recently. Um, it might have been the uh, second Hobbit. I went okay. opening weekend. Okay, so it was still like a Monday, but it was yeah. it was still popping. Yeah, and I went to choose my seat, and the whole and there were seats in the center of the theater, but I chose this. I by the time I got got that the actual physical seat mm-hmm. you had 400 people fighting in the center and me and some like other dude on the back <laughs> left side unmolested by anybody i could put my feet up anywhere and i'm Good. like yeah this is i'm happy with this decision i like that yeah i, I like that <laughs> i am a social reject but i'm happy with this decision <laughs> that's great so yeah. those are the movies you love uh, you, I mean, but you like all movies you like smaller movies too oh right? yeah yeah what draws you if you're gonna be drawn into a smaller movie what what kind of movies are those uh, you know the way way back I think about mm-hmm. okay. right off the bat that was just such a great movie. Is it because of the interpersonal drama, the small, the smaller scale, the smaller scale, the 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 I don't know. You know, it's it started with like seeing the trailer and being mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, you know, and and you know, I want to see this. It looks good, and uh, sure. just Sam Rockwell looked really funny in the trailers, right, right, right. and then and then yeah, I wouldn't go opening night per se, but I then I would hear. Uh, either you know Christian mm-hmm. and Mark through their reviews. Obviously, I can't escape it because mm-hmm. I'm posting them. So, like they would say, "Well, my God, that's one of my favorite movies of the year." And when sure. I hear that, I go, "Oh, I really got to see this." Mm-hmm. So then I do have a good good friend, uh, one of my best friends, uh, Joe Town. He's uh, he's also a writing partner of mine. We like to go and catch up on movies that we haven't seen or have heard about. Mm-hmm. Way way back was one of them. Like, we both heard really good things, and yeah. so we both said, well, why don't we go see it next week, uh, like Wednesday night, and we would, and then we would go and have a great time, and it was, you know, 
So I'm I'm like the independent movies, I guess, are the smaller movies, or mm. I just I see I try to see everything. Are, are you drawn to story over directing, or story over acting, or acting over story? It's always story. Story. Yeah. I, 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 it's a leading question because you're a writer, but yes. Yeah. But it, you know, some people I know some people it's acting. Yeah. Some people they're going for the director's names. Uh, our, our new friend from Schmoville, uh, Alicia Malone, she mm. is a fan of cinema, yeah. of fine cinema and movies, and it's all of those things. But she she will see whatever because she just wants to see a film. That's me. Uh, yeah. And that's you're more like you're, I, where yeah. I'm like story or things that make me feel depressed because of my sad life. <laughs> right. Um, so that's why I was I, I guess one of the key questions. So it is story. You it is. Story. You know, and there and there are movies that that will come out and I just will have no interest. And that's the story, I guess, okay. you know, like Hercules coming out with The Rock. Mm. No interest in that. So it's safe to say that uh, that's kind of an event movie, but you're it not is. drawn to it because of story. I'm not drawn to it because the story. It looks and and again, maybe it's maybe it, I like The Rock. Um, yeah, I don't like the director Brett Ratner. I'm not a fan. Yeah, true. But it just looks like something I've already seen. So I guess you would call that story, yeah. or you would call that cookie cutter filmmaking. So that's. That's the, that's the thing that came the, off the top of my head because we're in the middle of summer now. How, how can I ask you? You're a superhero guy too. You're a yeah, Superman yeah. guy. You're mm-hmm. a comic book guy. Yeah. Um, I have recently refound comics through yeah. my friendship with Tiffany Smith and Matt Key and Joe Ruggiero. Yeah. Enjoying the hell out of it, but I, I still don't go for the superheroes other than Hawkeye, who's uh, the great series for Marvel right now, Fractions yeah. series, because it's a he doesn't have superpowers. He essentially and he's kind of a messed up scoundrel. I like that guy. I'm drawn yeah. to that stuff. Yeah. How do you feel though? With Marvel's just hitting it out of the park, mm-hmm. and I liked Cap too, um, yeah. and I liked Avengers, and, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm more partial to the Dark Knight because again, I liked, I like Dark Knight or the Batman character at a, as a whole because he's a little flawed, a little yeah. more flawed. Yeah, though yeah. I love the first Iron Man because he's flawed. Tony he's... Stark was tremendously flawed. Yeah. Do you feel though? It's it's. How do you avoid it from becoming too cookie cutter five years from now when we're still doing superhero bad guy overcomes wins? Yeah. I don't how do know. you how do you throw it on its maybe I know maybe you don't need to I think I think t- 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 the best example I think about mm-hmm. now is X Men Days of Future Past Okay, hit I, me tell I, me I think it without that spoiling sp- that but... spun it for me that okay. like introduced something fresh where they they successfully rebooted the franchise essentially by doing the prequel First Class and and mm-hmm. introducing Xavier, young Xavier played by Mac and Boyd and I liked First Class by yeah the way. really liked it and and Fassbender as Magneto that kind of thing. So then when you all of a sudden have the – bring in the old X-Men that we, yeah. we knew at the start of the trilogy with uh, Brian Singer and then you merge them together using time travel, yeah, that's a pretty t- generic uh, – Sure, but, but it was done so well. It was done so well. Execution is the key. Yeah. Execution of all things. Yeah, but, but then I think Amazing Spider-Man 2 was mm-hmm. a cookie cutter. Yeah. It was it was pretty it my opinion I've been I've actually been blasted by by some fans mm. that do not like the fact that I did not like the movie and Superman is my number one Spidey is my number two so yeah. I wanted to like this movie and you kind I didn't see it yet but you kind of liked uh, Man of Steel right I did and, like Man of Steel and, and yeah. you and Ruggiero liked it too yeah. I believe I think he did. And you're both like Superman dudes. Yeah. Like you have tats with Superman. Yeah, I have a tattoo with that <laughs> you know Superman I mean? symbol. Yeah. So when you say that, and I get other people might not like some things, but when you say that and you're able to enjoy it as a uber Jerry Seinfeld level Superman fan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that means something to me. They must have done something different in that movie. They did. They they reinvented it. And I thought I totally hear what everybody said about, you know, the problems they had with it. Cause it, uh, it, some it, of the decision making that some of the Superman d- made. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I totally see where they're coming from, but hmm. they did. They, for me, they were able to really reinvent Superman and make it more of a realistic take. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, so, some of the, the 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 some of the the problems I'm having with the the sequel coming up is the fact that they just completely glossed over Superman and, right. for a sequel, and they just went, "No, now here's Batman." And I Wonder wanted Woman. I and Aquaman and Aquaman. Yeah, everybody's in it now. It's a Justice League movie, and I really wanted to, to see. Another Superman movie, the mm. sequel to Man of Steel, Man of Steel Two, that would have been, uh, that would have furthered those those uh, story elements that that Snyder and uh, Goyer mm-hmm. and and maybe Nolan, he was an executive producer, but started. Yeah. You know, I liked that mythology that gotcha. they created. I just, I mean, I look at we're going to be. Um 
we're going to be eventually this. <coughs> Excuse me. No, no problem. I, I fed you a nice dinner that. Uh, yeah. You know, and I got you talking a lot here. Um, <laughs> we'll get you that coconut water. Um, yeah, right. I, you know, Marvel's on a run that I think was well planned, and yep. they deserve all the accolades they yeah. got. I think Kevin Feige deserves a lot of accolades. I yeah. love the story I hear now. Uh, he was working uh, on the first X Men go around, right? And yeah. he was kind of an under associate producer, something smaller. Sure. And people on that set were like, "We got to do something with the character. Where can we? How do we get this character to work?" And he like grabbed the comic and was like, "Guys, it's all right in here." Yes. Yeah. So he knows his stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I I totally believe in that. Uh, you know, it's easy to cast off CEOs and big execs as just these puffy suit guys. He's yeah. not. He's a hat wearing, jacket wearing kind of jeans dude. Yeah. They deserve everything they've got, but. I, I and I know I'm I know I'm not a, a fan again, but I'm say I, I worry that I'm like once again here's the bad guys, here's the good guys, they're getting in the way and there's gonna be some big thing. Like Avengers I thought had no tension or drama for me. Hmm. Okay. Because I yeah, all right, if, if you know, unless they're gonna do something really dramatic like kill the Hulk. Yeah. Um right. I know it's gonna happen here. Yeah. I, I think that's I, I think that's typical. I mean, I think, you know... And it's storytelling sometimes in big movies. Uh, absolutely. We're all going to save the cat, but... Yeah, I, I I, mean, I keep going back to, to Amazing Spider-Man 2 because it was just very obvious what was going to happen from minute one. I knew exactly what was going to happen by the end of the movie. And maybe yeah. that's because I also, you know, uh, did say a lot that I had a problem with the, the marketing campaign that Sony did is that I saw the whole movie before the movie even came out. Right. You know, with all the, the trailers and everything. I agree with that. And that I felt like, as a writer, I could piece it all together. Yeah. Not saying I'm a brilliant writer, but I just... You are, I, I, Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, oh I'm going to pat myself back. I've been um, in your script reads. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, but no, I was able to at least have enough sense of storytelling yeah. to know that I saw every trailer. I went, yeah. okay, that's the end shot. That's the, that's, yep. yep. This is, I'm piecing it all together. I know, I know the movie. Yeah. And I hate that. And uh, I think X-Men Days of Future Past didn't do that. I was very, I thought that had a lot of tension in it. And yeah. um, the Avengers is different. I kind of, going off of your point, I, I can totally see what you mean. And, and I want to make clear, I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, you did. You said. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I, you know, do I disagree with you? I don't think so. I, I think I totally see what you mean. Mm -hmm. For me, it was just like, I was like a kid in a candy store seeing all of them together. Hey, look, I was like, huh? my, my writing partner and best buddy, Matt Key, yeah. that movie, you know, he cried coming out of it. Yeah. Know, more for the Thanos appearance. But yeah. Right. Um, and again, I, 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 I could buy into it. It's just, I, I know I'm not, again, we're, we're in, I always say we're in the bubble. We deal with movies and entertainment and pop culture every day. Yeah. Uh, there's people in, you know, um, the, I'm not going to make a Midwest States joke, but there's other people outside the industry who go to sure. these movies and they had a hard week at work and they just want to see Iron Man kick ass. Yep. So I get why it makes the money. I guess, yeah. I guess I'm being greedy as a fan and going, I just wish, you know, Tony Stark would drink again <laughs> uh, me too I, I think that the demon in the bottle storyline yeah. uh, from the comics again to go back mm -hmm. to your point with you know Feige hey yeah. guys it's all right, it's right here. here that that Iron Man storyline like yeah. I wanted to see Tony Stark deal with alcoholism yeah um, I just, it, it would be interesting to me I know you know I'm interested to see what they do with Guardians because that's a yeah. quirky outside the box kind of me too. property anyways and yeah. you give it to James Gunn so it's good I definitely agree with the marketing changing a lot of things too you just get tired of it I, I look at Star Wars Episode 7 yeah. um, I have already tried my best to not click on stories unfortunately or fortunately because I enjoy doing it but I, I do uh, you know the news headlines on the Schmoes No Movie Show so yeah. I'm going to have to get the stories on some of these I kind of wish I didn't Yeah. Be, uh, when it comes to Star Wars because I'm such a big fan I same with you I'm, it's I'm with you I don't, set leak photos I don't want to see I don't yeah. want to know until yeah. that first clip comes out. I, yeah, I've woken up to to you know those things like, will break in my sleep, and there's yeah. nothing I can do. <laughs> and I'll I'll wake up to messages. Did you see the t you know? And I'm like, oh god. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then I'm on and I'm I'm posting them. And yeah. uh, uh, I would lie if I if if I were to say that I have on a couple of occasions g given articles to other writers so I don't get spoiled. <laughs> Hey, I, I totally see it. Unfortunately, I, it's, it's, it's the name of the game. It is the name of the game, but I am definitely spoiled a lot because yeah. I see these things. And, you know, I actually got – somebody sent me something yeah. um, claiming to be a source. Um, I'm not running with it because there's yeah. no vet process in this this case. 
But I read uh, something that this guy sent. He said, well, I have a friend or somebody or other that works on something or other on this yeah. blah, blah, blah portion of the production. And I can firmly state that, and I read two <laughs> words of it and I went, delete. Right. I, I just, what if it was right? What if it was right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I did, I, It's and I'm not even going to tell you. Go like ahead. I read something that I, for, for Star Wars, and I went, oh God, I hope that's not right. <laughs> oh, because that, that yeah. it just. And for that, for other th- for the things I don't care about, obviously I don't care, so yeah. spoil away. But uh, even then, for some movies, I'm like, I still don't think I might see that. I'm not going to read this article a little bit. Foolish. Yeah. But I, I also think, because of this internet and, and gimme, 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 me first, me first, uh, the type of way we go around uh, Society, yeah. Uh, we want the first scoop. We want this and that. And yeah. now we're like we're we're reporting, not not just schmoes. It ever, it's all all, way, all all around. But yeah, we're reporting because someone heard that just might possibly be this guy's in negotiations to be this. Yeah. You just how, how about we wait two more steps until he sat down at the table? Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. uh, it just seems like so we're gonna have a lot of misfires. Number one. Yeah, it's. A, I think it's the nature of the, the game, yeah. and and. But that's why I love what we do on schmoesknow dot com, and it sounds like I'm I'm um, ass kissing here, and it is mm-hmm. Christian. It is. I love you. <laughs> no, um, but seriously, because uh, I go to all these sites. Yeah. When I have to put together the headlines, it takes mm-hmm. me four hours to write those damn headlines for the movie show. I know it does. Um, man. When I go to ours, it might be a morsel. Yeah, so and so might be cast. Yeah. Well, fans. Here's what we think about that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so it becomes not a news bite; it becomes a take on the news bite. That's that's what I think Schmoes has always been yeah. to, with what Mark and Christian did, and then what it's an extension now of what they're mm-hmm. what they created, and that that goes on with the podcast now and what mm-hmm. you do with the news, because your news is, as you know, and I'm going to ask his mm-hmm. you is brilliant. And I sit there and laugh my ass off that's every time. That's a harsh time. word. It's, a, it's a harsh I, I, I threw it out there. I appreciate it. Um, but you're commenting on it mm-hmm. in your way. Mm-hmm. I comment on, on my way. And I like to say, okay, you know, if we're covering from another uh, mm-hmm. site, it's easy. You know, it's okay. So they're reporting it. Yeah. Hey, this is what I think about it. Like today, father, you know, Nikki Fink throws out there that Father of the Bride Part 3 is going to be made. <laughs> and it's going to be about his gay son. Right. Uh, get marrying a Navy SEAL and right. George Banks, you know, Steve, Steve Martin, Martin uh, his character can't wrap his head around that. So hilarity ensues, <laughs> you know, and I did and, write that. And I already saw Steve Martin tweet out. Uh, Not true. Uh, essentially in his own Steve Martin way, uh, preparing for a role that's uh, for script I have not read or does not exist <laughs> like type thing. And there we go. Nikki Fink strikes again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but you don't know. But, he, yeah. you know, he could be denied and playing fun. Uh, uh, absolutely. I don't know. But, you, it, yeah. It, you never know. But that's it's... the downside of the world. And and I get the other sides, too. I mean, we were talking with Alicia Malone and Maud Garrett the other uh, episode. And for some of the outlets they work for, they have to be straight-laced and they can't have their opinions on it. Yep. I get that. Yep. I get it. It's a job. And you, they do it well and people do it well. Yeah. Uh, but I just like our opinions. Me too. I like your opinions. Thank um, you. Maybe one day I'll write for the site again. I oh God, I hope so. I'll give you my rates. Okay. Um, good. I would hey, like you that. mentioned something a little while ago, and you're uh, we're talking about movies here. I know yeah. a lot of Schmo fans are listening, but I want to switch gears a little bit here because okay. the last time I talked to you, yeah, and definitely the first time I talked to you, uh-huh. um, you were uh, kind of a single man swinging <laughs> all the fences alone. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and you mentioned you, you mentioned the girlfriend word about I, twenty minutes ago. I had yeah, I dropped the G word. Yeah. What's uh-huh. going on, Mark? Rather, <laughs> uh, yeah. What you can talk about in front of a microphone that is recording. Yes. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> it's 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 a done deal. I do have a girlfriend. Good stuff. I uh, I met somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, it you know I've been I've been single for a very very long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I think your listeners know I'm divorced. Many people know I'm divorced. A lot of people in this town. Know no, you're a divorced, lot of people. Think, know, yeah. 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 It, yeah, it caused a ripple. Um, so uh, <laughs> there was one party we were at, and uh, one of your most endearing traits is your uh, is your emotions. I, I love it when <laughs> yeah. you you're, you when you get a little fun and drink in you, you kind of become emotionally unhinged in the most cute way. Thank you, thank uh, you. I mean that. And you, we are nearby. We are on a rooftop party nearby the last known location of your ex wife. Oh, that's and right. I think a lot of people on Sunset Strip know that's where your ex wife lives now. Yes, <laughs> um, it was awesome. But you have moved past that in a grand fashion here, my friend. Yes, I have. You've yeah. got a nice uh, nice girl at your side. I, well, I've I, had the pleasure of meeting. You have. Uh, you have. A beautiful I, young woman. Thank uh, you. A great personality and, yeah. a, and a big personality and a mm-hmm. fun personality. Yeah. Uh, you glossed over where you met her, though. Uh, <laughs> you, you will love this. And because this is what's so funny is that we were talking about this on, I think, 
what was it my first appearance? No, first interview no. with Craig Smith. I don't no, know. No, it was with Roger. I do know yeah. that, and that is Tinder. I met my girlfriend on Tinder. A dating app. It was a dating app. You kids these days with their dating apps. Yeah, and that's what's so funny is that. We were even talking about it at dinner. You said you you have a friend too. That that yeah, right? a, f- a female friend of mine. Late, I was, uh, we were trying to maybe uh, sync up uh, on a very friendly level. We're yeah. good friends, and it was like, hey, we haven't seen each other in a while. Let's get some dinner or something like that. And and she's like, yeah, yeah. Hey, I have a I have a I have a guy now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, well, what happened there? She goes, you never believe it. Met him on Tinder. Yeah. And um, yeah, Tinder for those who are over the age of forty. Uh, <laughs> Is a uh, it's an app based off another app called Grinder, which was uh, right. a more of a well place to find uh, physical interactions with humans at random levels um, of the of the generally homosexual persuasion. But that's, uh, that's very good and it wasn't like it wasn't like heteros were like or the, the breeders were like we need our own or something like right, that. Right, right. Just kind of spawned and and you get an app and you put it uh, drunkenly on my phone one night at I a sure party. Did. Uh, I had didn't no, Megan. Uh, Megan, Megan, Megan Finley, once again, 23rd time mention on yes, the show, was, yes. it grabbed my phone and put it on there. Yeah. Because you were using it at the time. Wait, yes, I was. And, and I was I was all for it, putting yeah. it on your phone. And uh, I have some friends at my hometown, Matt and Jeff, who um, just haven't fully converted and committed in their hearts. <laughs> and if Matt and Jeff, you're listening, I want you to commit in your hearts to Tinder because I'm seeing it work like crazy down here. It's it. I, I'm as surprised as you and, are, my friend. It is base level. It yeah. is you upload five pictures or so, yeah. a basic profile, yeah. and there's an X or a heart. Yep. And if you heart that person, you press it. If you X, you never see them again. Exactly. <laughs> and they're and gone if you, from your profile. And if you hurt that person they and you want to talk to them, yeah. they got to heart you back. Totally random it's secret. To, it's totally random. And you know what? And this is what's funny about my mm-hmm. girlfriend is – but she says about this yeah is that she's like yeah sure it was a hot or not thing yeah but that's where it starts yeah and then you know i liked what you wrote you know in the little two words or or paragraph that i wrote and and then she said but what i knew right away was when i was talking to you via the app yeah right you know going back environment safe environment no numbers no nothing just talking back and forth I was doing what I do. I yeah. just I, I'm pretty open. Just pretty, doing what you do. I'm pretty funny. I, I'm I cool, guess. Riley. That's right. That's right. You should. <laughs> hey, babe, what's the matter with me? What's boom, the matter boom, with you? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so she she told me that she just for uh, immediately she uh-huh. she got a different feel from me, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. she just she was like, "You were really funny," and I went, "Oh, thanks." Mm-hmm. Um, so then it uh, obviously graduated to uh, here's my number, and then we talked. For now, a bunch okay, of times. so t- walk me through that process yeah. because um, I have a long-standing bad record with any kind of uh, dating site or app or anything. Going yeah. back, I know me too. I know a couple of people that have gotten married off of eHarmony, and yeah. and this one, he was an old roommate of mine. The first time he's like, "I'm going to try this." He got seventy matches. This was like 2004 or something yeah. like that. Seventy matches. He ended up marrying one of them. Yes, uh, it's pretty damn good odds. Yeah, um, yeah. I was like, "All right, I'm going to try it." I got five. Yeah. Uh, Joe Ruscarello, famously, this is 100% true, was rejected from eHarmony. The system itself said uh, no. I have a, I have a, a, a former friend uh, yeah. that I, I no longer speak with, but she got rejected too. <laughs> she so, told me. It, it happened. It, I, I, You're not I, alone. I can't believe that too. Yeah. Uh, not not just Joe, but with with mm. this other friend that it's like, really? It, she was an attractive woman yeah. and, and, and you know, just – I but guess I just historically have a bad record with it. So, so. I I did look. I got divorced, yeah. and look, even before I got married, I did match, mm-hmm. and it never worked. Right, right. It didn't. Well, it it didn't work for me. I just right. didn't. And so then, when I got divorced, I tried match again, more a little bit out of desperation, and like, oh, uh, let me find somebody who will like me again. <laughs> and uh, that <laughs> match is not That's the way great, to go. It's very um, honesty. Yeah, it is yeah. very honesty. Um, <laughs> it's very honesty. And uh, it's yeah, honesty delicious. Honesty delicious. But yeah, I went. I went and started doing match again after I got mm-hmm. divorced, and it just it again didn't work. And then I, I stopped for yeah. a very very long time. And then I, I did have a girlfriend, a very good friend of mine, and I we we dated for a little bit. Uh, still friends, yeah, and, and everything. Good, good person, very good person. One of the funniest comics I've ever seen. Before. Yeah, yeah. Who's getting engaged? Who's, who's now who's engaged? Now engaged? Yeah. yeah. So, um, but that didn't work out too, and that was more of of, of a symptom, more of the I mean still mm. being divorced and not ready and sure so then i spent 
about a year and a half, probably more than that, almost two years being single. Mm-hmm. And it was the start of the new year that I yeah. that I got the Tinder. Or yeah, no, well, no, no, we, no, it was we before that. Christmas 2013. Christmas, Christmas we were I at started the party. Doing it. Yeah. Bonnie Somerville's Christmas party, and yeah. that's where this came up. But you had just kind of been starting. I just started the Tinder. And, yeah. and you're a sincere dude. Our, our friend Finstock, who's a scoundrel, he plays what he calls <laughs> Tinder roulette, where he just <laughs> says yes to everybody and sees what you get. Yeah. That's a, a different agenda. That is. <laughs> Yours was a little more sincere. <laughs> I actually, yeah, I went on purely out of curiosity because I'm like, wait a minute, this is a free app. And then you hook it up and then all of a sudden you're looking at a pretty lady. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a Located minute. Located within a certain range that you select. Yes, exactly. And I'm like, oh, okay. She's two miles from me. She's two- one day ago. Yeah, ex- <laughs> exactly. Which, do, you know, there are people on Tinder that obviously use it for the hookups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, ever had it i only mm-hmm. i went on two dates sure the second one is my girlfriend right so that's that's how it worked well so take me through a little bit because you said oh hey you guys connect you talk you talked through the safe environment of the app and then she's like here's my phone number yeah then what do you go for a safe public coffee meeting with witnesses around in case <laughs> something goes wrong <laughs> right I mean, I'm, I'm more on concern for her safety than yours she, um so what, what yeah next? and then you kind of move into reality dating yeah yeah so we talked on the phone for a little bit and she uh, again uh she's really cute because she mm-hmm. she like was testing me to make sure i wasn't crazy <laughs> like I, I could hear it in her voice like yeah. you know she was a little like you know who are you you know what's what's what is this and so you know we we, we talked and again i was just i'm i'm a very open guy and i'm yeah. just like you know yeah i'm good i get it you know you're 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 a pretty pretty woman um and uh yeah i, I get it you, you don't want to meet a crazy person off of yeah. some internet thing yeah so we did so what 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 happened was and she she actually tells me this and i i find it funny is that i forgot that we were talking on <laughs> On the the app. Well, I mean, I didn't forget that we yeah. were talking. Yeah, we, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, I will um, talk to you later. I'm going. To, it was some weekend or what, whatever, and uh, I was, I can't remember what I was doing, but it, it was basically discussed that we were going to then talk to each other again to probably go out on a date. And for some reason, I thought in in my own mind, I was like, I'll never get this girl. Mm-hmm, she's mm-hmm. she's she's on I, I talked to her on the phone and she, i felt like she was testing me or something and, yeah. and younger, i was prettier more she, flexible yes yeah. younger prettier yoga instructor yeah. okay um yeah the, i get the flexible um and uh <laughs> he's giggling like a schoolboy. i know i don't know why i know right um but yeah i i i basically so unlike me i guess but i i went no this girl's not into me and so I just kind of moved on, and I'm busy, so I just yeah. it wasn't like I did it intentionally. I sure. just kind of yeah, guys in our genre do that. Yeah, there's guys in the Josh Makuga genre who just <laughs> assume every woman loves them, and most of the time it's true. That is true. You and I them. assume that we're going to have to give them Josh's phone number. Yes. I get it. <laughs> yes, or or you know, or I'm never going to bring my girlfriend around this person because <laughs> they will leave me for Josh Makuga. Yes, um, but yeah, it was funny because she she then contacted me. Uh, through the, 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 I mean, or not, sorry, she texted me. She says, so are you coming down to Orange County anytime soon? And it was like, it jogged my memory because mm-hmm. I have family in Orange County and I was obviously playing Tinder in Orange County because that's where I <laughs> that's met where her. her. I, I liked her. Yeah. Forgetting, of course, that it is a destination or, you yeah, know, it, it's, however it's far by, you are. Yeah. Radi- um, radius. Yeah, it it's is radius, radius based dating. Mm-hmm. But that, that also plays into a, a very good thing in our relationship is that we're so far is yeah. that we we don't see each other during the week a lot so the weekends are very fun so i think i actually think that works a little it, bit yeah. it really does yeah. so but anyway she she said you know so are you coming down to orange county anytime soon and i just remember like leaping at my phone yes i'm coming down this weekend because i was yeah. i was actually coming down that weekend to visit my niece who is in orange county right so again uh, that's how stupid i was i thought this girl was like not, had no interest in me whatsoever mm-hmm. it was tinder therefore probably never going to work out anyways and right. she she put it out there and i went down and, and we we picked a, a bar a, a crowded bar so yes mm-hmm. it was a, a public witness, witness based yeah. witness based um, and uh, we sat like, and I remember telling my mom you, this. You had Bob Sugar there firing you in public. That's <laughs> I what it know. Was, yeah. I remember telling my mom because I would stay with my yeah. mother down in Orange County. Um, and I said, "All right, I'm going on this date. You know, I met this girl and blah blah blah." 
And she said, okay, are you going to be back? I said, yeah, I'll probably be back in an hour. This is not going to work out. <laughs> um, and she went, all right, I'll see you in an hour. And I said, okay. Four o'clock in the morning, I rolled in. Like, right. I, I went and met Julie, my future girlfriend, and we had just the best time. Sure. We, we had a drink. Uh, and we talked and we just were just absolutely comfortable. Like yeah. it was, it was kind of amazing for me. I haven't felt that way in a long time, obviously Yeah. where it was like, Oh, wait a minute. No, no, this is it. This, this is good. It, and it wasn't like, Oh, this is the one I'm going to marry. No, it was like, no, no this girl is cool. Yeah. And she then told me like, yeah, you're cool. I, you know? And so we had a drink and then she went, well, there's a great bar next door. Do you want to go? Yes, I do. Great. Yeah, yes, and we I went do. and had, uh, Another right. few drinks and uh, and then we then we ended up at another bar. It was just this, it kind of up, we were walking around everywhere. Ended up on the beach in Newport playing a ukulele <laughs> and a little tin horn. <laughs> yeah, singing, well, singing songs. Almost, almost. No, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it ended up being a a cab ride for mm-hmm. me because I I drank a little too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, took her back to her her place and um, very very nicely walked her to the door and made made sure she was home safe. And she said, uh, well. Are, are you staying the whole weekend? And I said, yes, I am. She said, well, can I see you tomorrow then? And I said, yes, you can. <laughs> and then I took a cab back to my place, uh, went to sleep, uh, d- woke up the next morning, talked to her again, and we went out again. Yeah. And uh, the, the rest is history, as and the they rest, say. The rest is, is, is a living history. Yeah, it is a living. it's still going strong. It's That's going correct. strong, but it's new. And look, I, I love it, too. It's 2014 now. Yeah. And there is still this, now I think it's a self-imposed stigma for internet dating. Absolutely. The future has long come and gone, folks. We're here in the future. Yeah. Dating and dating sites and 1-800 numbers have been here for a while and yeah. everything else. But but they're still, even with this friend of mine, I won't mention her name to keep her safe. Like, I know. Can you believe it? I met this guy in Tinder. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Because we're all on it. We all live on social media. Yeah. Not it, just that we're all on Tinder, but we all live on social media. So, yeah. And you know what? There's no you, – we joke – about needing to be in public, but guess what? You meet someone at a grocery store and ask her out. There's no more guarantee than in the internet that she ain't crazy or exactly. that he ain't crazy. It, absolutely, it's the same risk. I I totally agree, and I was against it too. I had those misgivings. It's a stigma. For it. I get it. It is a stigma. I was like, I'm never going to meet somebody. Mm-hmm. Yet I'm doing it. I'm playing that game. Yeah. I'm wanting. I'm hoping that I do have that moment where I go, Wait a minute! I actually met somebody. Yeah. And I did. It, it's living proof right here. I mean, forget uh, 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 Lena Headey, uh, Cersei Lannister from Game of Thrones, was just on uh, recently on Chelsea uh, lately, mm-hmm. and they were talking about she's single and, and Chelsea was trying to get her to join Tinder, and she's like, ah, I won't do it. I do. I, I go through my friends, and I'm like, the moment I find out she joins, I'm going to drive to wherever her radius is, and I'm going to just like until she says uh, yes. <laughs> you know, like that's so it's 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 out there, but people still have this. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, and I don't know. Why? I mean, I get why because I mean, no, I do get why. Yes, we still think it's 1993. Where yeah, you're like, oh, some guy in his mom's basement in his boxer shorts with his rifle is right. waiting for you. <laughs> you know, like that's not what happened. Yeah, no, it's very legit mm-hmm. now. I mean, look, I did match, um, yeah. and and would go on these awful dates. Yeah, I went on. <clears throat> excuse me, I probably went on like three dates. Yeah, and they were all awful. They just, you know, sure. it did. And, but you know, how many awful dates did you find in quote reality? You know what I mean? I, yeah, My again, point, you know? I, I got set. I mean, I remember being divorced, and then like you know. <laughs> It was like a month later. My one of my friends is like, "I'm setting you up, and you need to get back on that horse." I'm like, "I need to get out of bed." You know, it's like that's what I got to do. <laughs> Look, I, I met someone on Friendster once, and turned out she was doing meth. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but you know what? I, you don't know what you're gonna find. You don't know when and you I, run into someone at a coffee shop. Exactly. And so, and I look at it now from because I kind of am a, a, a romantic, if you Aww. will. But I look at it. I'm like, man, if that yeah. if that app didn't you know just work out the way it worked out i would have never met this girl yeah uh i can't remember if i mentioned her name julie yeah no, julie i did okay good uh, i didn't know if i was she's not, or not she's not protected anymore yeah well that's fine <laughs> i mean we're we're legit now so we're she, legit. she's she's fine um but i think about it like wow that person that lives on that street in orange county mm-hmm. that i would pass every day uh when i would go visit my grandmother or whatever yeah. you know or with family or whatever it, if i didn't just 
you know, hit that like button, I just never would have met her. It's like like ro- technology. Yeah. You're, you're sounding like a romantic, uh, quirky Ben Folds ballad right now. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, but well, yeah, technology brought me to it. It's so. just we can't accept that our stories will change for our grandchildren. There was a comic in 2005 with a, a very great point. bit. He had a great bit about how this is a story you're going to be telling your grandchildren about how you met and it goes through the steps. I answered a, a 15-part questionnaire, and then, and then we met for a safe lunch at Chili's. <laughs> That comic by the name was Ken Knapsack. He was kind of a good comic before. Oh his time. my God, I love it. Uh, yeah, it was a, a great bit I had, and people reacted to it quite well. But the, my point was, our stories have changed, and we all want to say we wrote letters uh, as we took trains away from each other and went to university yes. during the during the big war. <laughs> like that's not what we have anymore. No, you know? no, and and as you know as well as I do, uh, in this business that we are in, I find it very hard to meet somebody. I just do. It's impossible. I I, I just, I got out of my marriage and and it was like, Mm -hmm. you know, okay, well, I'm single, wonderful. And I, of course, would meet girls. And I remember meeting a girl at Bonnie Somerville's uh, Mm -hmm. Christmas party and asking her out. And she went, well, how about I give you my email instead? (laughs) And I said, oh, okay. Uh, I'm not doing, you know, What's your IMDB resume? Right, right. So that was, you know, and I I was having a very nice conversation with her. And then I've met girls. And it turned. It turned. (laughs) Well, I'll give you my email. (laughs) And I'm like, well, that's just the kiss of death. You're not. Yeah. And sure enough, she did not ever write me back. Mm, Yeah. Um, But. So it was hard. So that's essentially why I went to Tinder. I mean, it's like, what, it do, what do you got to lose? And it worked, my and it friends. Worked. It worked. It yeah. worked. It worked. And, and and that's my lesson to those out there. Um, I know I have uh, – look, I mentioned we have, we're a genre of men. There's a genre of people. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be girls too for sure who just kind of look in the mirror and think, uh, why me and not me? Mm-hmm. Um and uh, they're out there. You just got to be bold, be brave, and find it and commit to it. Uh, just the dating process itself or yeah. open yourself up to someone. I don't do that. Yeah. But you all <laughs> should do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's fun. Absolutely. I'm so happy for you, too. Well, thank you. I'm so happy for you, too. Thanks, Um, dude. And to watch uh, the change, man. We can chart the change of Riley's last year and a half on the Knapsack Files. I know. You can. Oh, my (laughs) God. Isn't that crazy? It it does. And I I like the balance you have. Uh, I I am all for a little built-in distance into relationships. Yeah. Me, too. I'm wary of those outside of married couples. But but even in marriage, you should have some distance. But I'm wary of those who cannot live without each other. (laughs) Yeah, and that's I'm not big on that. And you know, divorce changes a man. Um, um, I'm sure it does. <laughs> no, but you know, I'm as as my girlfriend now knows, and as mm. I know about her past now, and you know, mm. we both went through stuff that you know we both now mesh well because of it. You know, it's like yeah. oh, I went through this, and this is what I don't like anymore, and this is what I well, like. I get, we we've talked about it a little bit as, as friends uh, yeah. that I won't divulge anything, and I don't know. It's not like I know dark secrets, but sure. I, I've seen the workings of how you guys are performing as a couple right now with mm-hmm. each other and it seems to be very open honest communicative yeah. and problem solving yeah Should anything arrive yes arise yeah uh, so it's, that's that's a good mature well, modern relationship then. yeah yeah well especially when you get out of one relationship i don't care if you're married or not yeah. you know and, and it doesn't work out you're going to take something away from it that you want you're different both, you're both going to have triggers yeah you're going to have triggers and you're also going to go like there are things that I just it's flashbacks yeah <laughs> flashbacks or but then then there will be just moments where I'm like you know, I'm, I, you know especially for my marriage I know what I don't want now yeah. um, and uh, I know I wanted somebody that was outside of the business mm-hmm. because oh, okay. yeah. I, I did that's very to be very honest with you I well, my divorce. Uh, I, I was married to somebody in the in the same business, and I just didn't. We're talking about the plumbing business. The people. plumbing business, no. yes, um, the biz as we call it. Yeah, the entertainment industry. Yeah, but I wanted somebody outside of it because I really enjoy now being able to talk to Julie about, you know, craziness, s- cra- craziness, or she's now become somebody there for me that kind of listens to me vent and then goes, mm. "You done? You want to go have fun?" <laughs> Great. And, Let's do it. Yeah. And that's – and then it's like I'm away yeah. and I'm with her and we're talking about life. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. what I like. Make, make no mistake, folks. It, this, this entertainment industry is hard to do it and, and it's mm-hmm. a noble cause if you're going to do it. But um, it's it's a 
toll on the soul for sure. <laughs> uh, look, I think soldiers have it tougher. Police, fire, teacher. Those yeah. those are the heroes out in the world. Don't. Them. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, when I say noble, but it, you know the, the the arts and pursuing the arts and pursuing it's, your dreams. If you have that, it, it's something you should do if you want to do it. But it's hard, and then the people in it mm-hmm. were all damaged. And I will not take anyone saying that we're not. Oh yeah, I'm damaged <laughs> like not. crazy. And I'm sorry, you meet these beautiful young actresses and actors that you um, mm-hmm. look at and love and lust and think that's what you want. Mm. Um, ooh, it's it's harder, easier said than done. And yeah. and to find people outside of the industry. Who uh, who just kind of go live a normal life? It is it is comforting. It, it was very. That's I couldn't mm-hmm. have asked for a better version of my girlfriend, mm-hmm. and you know it, for what she does because she there, she, there, she does things that's a, a little. She is a yoga instructor. Yeah, she is uh, a very much. Uh, I want to live and mm-hmm. just have fun, and she's also very in tune with like she's you know reading books that are that have nothing to do with entertainment <laughs> right and and telling me about it and that's that's what i like you know yeah. it's something where i can kind of shut off that part of me and yeah. and, and it's yeah I mean, i'm trying to equate it to other careers look most cops marry cops mm-hmm. and then they'll marry them five times um yeah <laughs> uh, five different cops uh i see it and i get it and i most some of my best friends are police officers and, mm-hmm. and uh Ooh, that's a that's a tough world. The things they see, you you folks in the public don't really even know unless you know the cops themselves. I can so imagine it, it's tough to take that home and to sure. have someone outside of the industry, yeah, uh, of that industry. So I get that, but even then, I, I question it. Um, mm-hmm. So it's, um, you know, like. Uh, I yeah, I don't want to. I don't. It sounds rude to say all actresses are crazy or all actors are crazy. Yeah, because they're it's that's a generalization. But absolutely. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> we've got off on this topic because now I'm trying to solve it in my head. Because yeah, no, be, I'm with you. Because uh, the other thing is we're all of like mind, uh, mm-hmm. generally speaking. So when you're that creative person, you're attracted to other people because of their vibrance and their creativity yeah. and their humor and this and that. And maybe sometimes people outside the industry don't have that or don't have that to that level. Yeah. Um. So it gets confusing sometimes. You're like, well, I want that person to talk about, you know, Star Wars with all the time or something. And, sure. Um. But it's good. It's good. Don't underestimate the balance. Yeah, right. Right. And I. I think I've. I've wanted that too. And you I've, wanted the balance. Or I've needed the balance. I. I needed the balance. No, I wanted there. There was times when I was very much into. I want to meet somebody in my business. I thought I did and married her, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that blew up in my face. So I'm not saying that that then became uh, the reason that I wanted to meet somebody outside of the business. It just kind of slowly became that 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 it just I don't know it just became that well, because I was yeah again not talking bad not, this isn't a bad talk about your wife or anyone's exes it's, sure but a relationship with it when it ends regardless of of marriage or not or even friendships that end or for whatever reason you I've should be able to learn something about yourself and mm-hmm. what you want yeah. and that's a very strong point I know we have young Schmovian fans who are graduating I see a lot of our fans graduated high school today yeah I, 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 I don't even have a girlfriend yet and everything let me tell you fans <laughs> you got a long time number one watch yeah. the 40 year old virgin that was my story um, <laughs> um, but you, you go in, be afraid. Don't be afraid to mess up a little bit. I was I was afraid for a long time, so I became a little sheltered in my own right. Mm-hmm. And then when I had my first big relationship, and I think she's gone on and changed to become a better person. I don't know her closely, but I, I, we're social media friends. Yeah. I think she's gone to have some great positive changes in her life. At that time, she was in a bad way, and I was learning. And when that ended, I was driving away up Sepulveda Boulevard with U2's uh, song playing, uh, <laughs> One Step Closer. I'll never forget it. And um, I remember thinking, ah, I know I can walk away from something. And I know I can say no. And I know I can cry and be okay. And that was a powerful lesson to learn coming out of that. To take to the next relationship. That's that's what I took from my divorce. I mean, that... Jesus, I knocked me on my ass, and uh, <laughs> I almost wish I saw Dark Riley. I know. Well, I've only heard tales. I, there were tales. tales. Lore, yes, the lore. But yeah, then it, it's like it's amazing then how much you kind of change. That does mm-hmm. change you, and then again, marriage, ex relation. It doesn't yeah. matter being married or whatnot. But uh, the, the it, now I know what I want and what I, yeah. I I've already seen myself do things differently that right. that I would do. Uh, in my marriage or mm-hmm. even in my 
relationship after my marriage yeah. that didn't work and out. And folks, I'm not advocating uh, starter marriages. Uh, no, you know, I, I, I take I, marriage seriously. I, with, I with, take but, it very seriously. That's uh, why it knocked that's me why in my you ass. Did it? But yeah, yeah. Oh no, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it was uh, too serious. I'm it just, was. Uh, I was like, oh my god, this is actually ending, and yeah. I was standing in front of my whole family and friends saying this is who I'm going to spend the rest of my life with right. and then three years later we're getting a horrible divorce right. and so it's like it's it's embarrassing yeah. somewhat yeah. Um, my ego was just damaged like I, I can't believe I did that <laughs> so um, you know but now I, I see what I'm doing change the changes sure. in me that I am now doing in my new relationship that's great though that's Thanks, how man. it should be man yeah. I'm happy for you and uh, I hope we didn't get into a deep dark turn folks but I think that's kind of the interesting <laughs> slices of life that we all can take from and learn yeah and getting to know uh, my guests on a deeper deeper level yeah I felt like I was on NPR yeah tell me well, more Mark Riley yes yeah, so <laughs> I'll give you my rates for any therapy that you received and here session. comes the wallets absolutely <laughs> but we also got to talk about movies uh, so uh, of course uh, we're going to do more about the Schmoes No website and another episode with Stacey Howard and yourself and me yeah. moderating you yeah. guys but for right now where can they find you on the social media well you can no longer on Tinder folks yeah I'm not on Tinder <clears throat> yeah Tinder is gone excuse me um, you can find me at Riley Around on mm-hmm. Twitter uh, R-E-I-L-L-Y around mm-hmm. and at schmozno.com that's you can find me uh, all my stuff is on there so you can schmozno.com it is yeah. your source for movie news reviews mm-hmm. and clues that's I'm Ken Absock and these are the Schmozno headlines <laughs> um, great and of course every Thursday we do the live podcast yep. uh, you can catch it later on iTunes or Stitcher now but uh I, if you get a chance to catch what we do live, yeah. it's fun. It's a community. Every Thursday, 6 p.m. PST to 8 p.m. PST mm-hmm. from the AfterBuzz TV studios, which has been fun working over there. Yeah. Uh, just being one step closer to Kathy Kelly all the time. So fun. She's That's not good. a tender. She knows. Hi, I, Kathy. I, I couldn't find her. Um, <laughs> but uh, find us on our website, schmoesno.com. That is your place to watch the show live. Yeah. Please do it. We have a lot of fun. Uh, Knapsack Files, don't forget you can find us on Facebook and like us there and then find us on Stitcher or iTunes. If you're on iTunes, rate and review. Follow me on Twitter at Ken Napsock, N-A-P-Z-O-K. And don't forget schmoesno.com. Once again, Mark Riley, it's been a pleasure. Always a pleasure, Thank my you friend. for sharing. I, thank you for opening yeah. up. And thank you, sir, for breaking bread with me earlier. Oh, well, and thank you. Some, sharing some french fries. There we go. Like gentlemen do. Mm-hmm. Until next time, I'm Ken Napsock. We will see you.